Good afternoon. Um, thank you uh, for giving me the chance to present. Uh, on top of that, I'm very moved because people started uh, picking on Toronto and uh, within Quebec, actually, it's in Montreal that we pick on. So I'm pretty happy that the target has switched today. Um, especially since I saw that you were really fans of the Montreal Canadiens. That <laughs> rubs my, my heart. Um, to, get to, to, to get to the topic, um, I'm here to present you a, a workshop that uh, I uh, facilitated in Edmonton a couple of years back. Um, it was, uh, I'm presenting it so that you know that it's something that could be done here in Newfoundland and Labrador uh, if you need it. If you need it, then uh, you just have to uh, contact us and negotiate with us the, the terms of the eventual workshop. So, um, uh, before I start, I have to say that also if I'm presenting this workshop was really developed with the people in Edmonton at the Capital Health, former Capital Health, because uh, former because Capital Health has been dissolved with the deregionalization in, in Alberta. So uh, it really was developed, the, the aims, the activities, uh, everything was designed in collaboration with them, in cooperation with them. So it would be the same thing uh, in a future workshop here. Um, the other thing I, I want to know, uh, to, to point out, is that um, uh, I'm, uh, I've written entitled Transportation Related Policies also because, uh, as many people have pointed out, uh, today if we design schools in such a way as that parents will have to get uh, kids there uh, by car, they, they will move there by car, and this has impact on transportation. The, the same thing with hospitals, by the way. Um, hospitals are often built with huge supply in, in parking and often with no thinking behind with regards to other modes of transportation. And I'm pretty happy to talk about these things because my PhD was on transportation policies. So, um, a forward, uh, NCCHPP, wh what do we do? Uh, our mandate is uh, knowledge translation and exchange. Um, especially, uh, we work for uh, public health authorities and not-for-profit organizations. That's what, uh, what the people we try to reach uh, are doing generally, or where they're working generally. So that's our main audience. So uh, that, this has to be taken into account in, in what we do. Um, there are many ways to classify what we do and to present what we do. I like to say that we uh, do knowledge translation and exchange on two things. Uh, Francois Benoit is going to classify them in, in other ways tomorrow morning in the morning session, in the breakfast session, but I, I classify them in two ways. We work on public policy processes. We have people in our team who, who have training in public health, but most people have training in, public, in, in political sciences. Uh, communication sciences, sociology, and ethnography. So, uh, so we have people that don't have typically the background of public health, and we look at public policy processes from these points of view and those grids of, of analysis. And we also worked on the effects of public policies. Uh, a good example of that, and it's right on the topic, uh, the, first, uh, the first picture on the left here is a tra traffic calming intervention that's been done close to a uh, school in Montreal. One, the, the, the right lane has been taken away, and uh, why I say it's on topic is because of yesterday we just published a review of literature of traffic calming interventions on, uh, on uh, active transportation, air quality, noise, and also on traumas. So we took a look at what the literature uh, was saying about this, and we synthesized it. And now we're going to be uh, offering presentations of these things to uh, public health people, but also to uh, in workshops uh, to to work on, on these issues and seek ways into which policies could support these interventions. Um, so I, I'm, I've already started talking about what we're trying to, to work on now. Uh, the second picture is a roundabout. A roundabout is a, a very effective intervention in terms of trauma. Um, it's uh, quite pertinent in urban settings, but it's also been proven very effective in uh, suburban settings and uh, also in uh, more uh, smaller and rural communities, if you will. Uh, so we're do doing a, a kind of fact sheet on that and trying to sum up the evaluations that have been done around these things. There are many uh, issues around, uh, around these, uh, these roundabouts, but uh, uh, they, they seem to be pretty effective in, in what they do. 
the, the last picture on the right is, uh, I haven't found a very good translation of this. In French, it's a traversée d'agglomération. The only translation I could find in English was environmentally sensitive true road design. It's not very sexy as a name, and besides, besides that, it, it's a bit of a misnomer because uh, the idea with traversée d'agglomération or these kinds of interventions is that the, there are interventions which seek to retrofit uh, 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 public ways that have been thought of as roads into, uh, into streets also because they, they, they are meant to intervene on, on, on public ways that go through villages or through small municipalities and that have also the function of being the main street of, the, of this village and that suffer the consequences of them being designed as transit ways for regional or provincial purposes. So we are doing an information sheet on that, on that and it should be out uh, uh, shortly in the next few months. Um, so, as I said, I, I'm here to present you uh, the workshop, and I'm going to try to allude all through my, my speech uh, to what and how it could be adapted for Newfoundland and Rabador. Uh, the workshop itself was a day-long uh, process. We had two different parts. I'm going to come back to that. We had two different part, uh, parts in the, in the day, but uh, the, the, the process of building the workshop, although, took uh, almost three months. Uh, the negotiations between two agencies that didn't know each other before and didn't know um, uh, what they would do together at, at first was a, a bit long, but it was quite uh, fruitful in the sense that it, uh, it, it brought us to a space where we could negotiate what we could bring to the table and what was needed in Edmonton. Um, it was uh, also a gathering of uh, health professionals. As I said, we organized that with people in capital health uh, uh, region, uh, but also we had their uh, planning consultants, both uh, public uh, consultants, but also private. A lot of, of the work of, uh, of, of planning in Edmonton is done by private, private agencies, so uh, we got them to the table too. Uh, we had not profits uh, uh, in there too. We had uh, for example, the Sierra Club from Edmonton, but we had other, other organizations in com more involved in community economic development uh, issues. So we had a range of people. We, we had about 25 participants. And it was quite an ideal uh, kind of size of, 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 uh, of um, uh, session in this way. Um, the two aims of the day, as they were set with uh, Capital Health, was to develop a collective understanding of the problem. Uh, I'm, I'm going to come back to that. Uh, the problem of, of health inequalities related to transportation policies. And it was also, the second aim was to develop uh, uh, ideas, strategic directions in which they could move in Edmonton on that topic. Why did we need to develop a collective understanding of the problem? Because uh, in Edmonton, they had not started working on that, um, either in the region, uh, in the health region, or uh, in the, the city uh, uh, offices, or other city authorities, or even in the not-profit sector. They had not taken a look at how transportation policies and transportation-related policies were creating inequality. So uh, what was first established with Capital Health was that they needed to discuss these things. It's not because it's not obvious. You could frame, um, as you can see it here, you could, you, in order to, to say that there are inequalities arising from transportation policies, you, you need to identify groups that are suffering inequalities, or you, you need to, you need criteria to, to identify these groups. We've heard this morning that you could talk about uh, cyclists or pedestrians, so you're defining a group according to the way it transports itself. You could define a group by its low, uh, its, its socioeconomic status. You could define it, say, for example, saying it's got a low socioeconomic status or high economic status. We've heard people talking about age-friendly communities. You could, so you could define inequalities along these lines. In the U.S., there's a large body of literature in, in political sciences that talk about the differences in along ethnic and racial lines. For example, the setting up of highways in downtowns as uh, really impacted um, uh, black communities and Latino communities in the U.S. So there are lots of ways in which you can classify the groups, and uh, this was the first step to, to try to get uh, at this definition of the problem in Edmonton. 
Determin determinants also are numerous related to transportation. It could be access to services such as food uh, for people working in food security, but also uh, air quality, noise, uh, traffic, uh, collision. So there are a number of determinants that are at play in, which, uh, in the policies that we're talking about, uh, that we could be talking about. So that's, this was the second thing in which we, we try to help people uh, start thinking about. Um, the, also, the policies involved are numerous. Uh, Erna just talked about the range of policies ranging from taxation to uh, uh, infrastructure localization, uh, the provision of parking. Uh, there are a number of policies, again, that we could be looking at. So the, the idea with them was uh, to st start a discussion and with a guide, with the help of a guide uh, to um, – this is the second point that you see – with the help of a guide that I created for, for them. Uh, that asks them to identify the determinants we were talking about, the groups that we were talking about, and the policies that we were talking about. Uh, we created four groups, and, and people in the room were trying to discuss those issues and trying to define the problems and, and see where the policies came in, and, and, and so this was the first step. But before we went on with this guide and this guided discussion, uh, I made a small in introduction. I, as I told you, I worked quite a bit on transportation policies. So what I did then is try to uh, synthesize the literature in political sciences that I have looked at health inequalities arising from transportation policies and made a small presentation to start the discussion, not to say you should think about these things in this way in Edmonton, but just to introduce generally how it's framed in transportation policies discussions, how these inequalities are, are talked about and conceptualized and, and thought of. We didn't want to left or leave people be completely overwhelmed by, by the problems because they're numerous and the policies involved are numerous and the determinants are, are numerous. So we decided that the second part of the day, this was the morning, we discussed the problems in the morning, not that they were stabilized. I mean, they, we didn't clear the field. It, there's not one definition of the problem in Edmonton now, but we felt nonetheless that we needed to... Uh, to go on and to try to help people imagine what um, solutions there were. And uh, when I say strategic, I, I, mean, uh, I mean it intentionally. I, I don't mean that we said, well, we, we should put a, a tram line uh, in this neighborhood. or We didn't go into these details, but uh, we were discussing a more strategic level. Uh, for, I'm just going to give you an example of what strategic means. One of the things... Uh, one of the things that was discussed was um, a new tram line that was planned in Edmonton, and they were already planning um, they were already planning um, uh, to develop them as transit oriented development. Uh, so transit oriented development is typically developments that is planned around uh, strong transit lines. So you would have mixed use, uh, relatively high density. That's pu that's that's um, that's. Uh, thought of in, in these neighborhoods, but the, the, we discussed the possibility of integrating uh, low and affordable, affordable housing in those, in those uh, new transit-oriented developments, whereas they hadn't thought about it before. So um, I, I, I gave this example because it's one of the, the examples I, I, I gave in, in the presentation that was uh, again, an introduction to the afternoon. Uh, the first activity that w was set up was a presentation by me. I, I kind of looked at their planning documents, both transportation and urban planning documents. And uh, from, from a stranger perspective, I, don't, I really didn't know much about Edmonton where I haven't been for 35 years, I guess. Uh, when I was young, I went to the Rockies and I passed through Edmonton. I didn't know much about Edmonton, but I look at the documents and I looked at their transportation policies. Uh, I looked at their uh, urban planning again with uh, different kinds of provision for social housing and, and these kinds of things. And I, I made some kind of attempts to, to say, well, this is how I see where you're at. And these are, these are reasonable, uh, these are reasonable uh, things to 
think that could be doable in Edmonton. So just to start the discussions, I, I made this presentation. It's easy not to respect the codes uh, as a stranger, so you can say monstrous thing for the, pe for, for the people that are there, and you know, you're not uh, held accountable for that. And so we proceeded from that. Um, and so the, the idea was to see what was possible in Edmonton, not just to imagine strategies that, you know, you know, could be ideal in, in an ideal world, but what, you know, it's, Edmonton is not an easy context to work on inequalities, and it's not an easy uh, context uh, in, in which to work on transportation policies either. So you have to look for ways that, uh, strategic directions that are uh, practical and that, you know, people can adhere to in, in some ways. So, again, we proceeded with a guided discussion in, in small groups uh, with uh, uh, a grid of analysis that asked them to uh, develop a strategy. Each of the group had to develop a strategy uh, to present arguments saying it's going to benefit these groups or these groups and it should uh, be received as such by transportation planners, it should be received as such by electo elected officials, by community members, by community groups. So they, they had to kind of do an, uh, a network analysis of the force fields in which they were. They had to analyze or try to try to think of how other actors in their field were going or in this field were going to react to their proposition. So they had to defend it at the end of the day and also critique it in the standpoint of uh, possible opponents. I'm done. Eh? Time up. Um, so I'm going to lead you to that. I think I alluded to many things. Everything is up for a discussion almost in these workshops, in this uh, offer of workshop. Uh, we could discuss the length. Uh, we could discuss uh, who is going to be at these workshops, uh, how uh, they are going to be participating in the workshop also. Um, the object itself, it doesn't have to be on inequalities. If you want to frame it in other ways, it, it could also be, uh, be framed in other ways. For example, age-friendly community is a way to talk about inequalities, uh, but in other ways. Um, we could concentrate on problem definition or problem discussions or solutions if you have some specific solutions you're thinking about. And it's not because we worked in a big city that we're not happy to work in smaller com communities. So thank you.